right, while we wait for a clicker. Uh, welcome everybody, and it's really exciting to be here. Um, I'm gonna be, put a little bit of a different take on all the presentations. Uh, I'm gonna look at a bit of philosophy, knowledge, philosophical knowledge behind it, to think about knowledge, to think about disruptive thinking, to think about the future, to think what it means to fail from a very positive perspective. Because I may have a PhD, but I got a master's in failure. I wouldn't be standing here as my children. I have, you know, motherhood I learned through trial and tribulations. My work through trial and tribulations. There's a lot of things I have attempted to do. I failed, I tried again. And I think until 86, I'll be trying to do it perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm inspired. I'm inspired by a reflection on what is possible. And you can see here the way it moves in and the way it's supposed to zoom out. I'm inspired by Star Wars. Star Wars. I never fail to understand, you know, I always ask my children, which episode is this? Until I started realizing that Star Wars is moving back and forward in the future and backwards and try to see where things went wrong, try to see where things could be made better. And I believe that is an inspiration that I'm bringing you here today. And I'm speaking on behalf of Playum. Playum is a charity that brings young children into the maker space, not only small children, also marginalized communities. We are trying to bridge the gap in technology we also bring parents in to be part of that knowledge process. Because one of the questions I'm gonna reflect on is what is knowledge? You know, uh, is knowledge just a product? Or is knowledge something that grows inside of us and gives us a kind of wisdom? And these are some of the ponderings today. So we're gonna reflect on the role and shape of failure in education. Um, I'm not a tiger mom. Far from it, <laughs> but I'm kind of vicious when it comes to certain things. Um, I talk about knowing versus not knowing about the future because we are at the border of such a new era. Um, the pace of change that is increasing, the need to address failure in a positive manner because we also talk about emotions in education. We are losing sight that in Artificial intelligence, emotions, is something they struggle with the most. And I'm going to talk about the need to adapt classroom teaching and technology and how to do that. So for too long, the emphasis on failure has brought on the negative connotation, which affects emotions and the desire to learn. You didn't do it perfect. We've all heard it. When I was about 14, 15, I struggled in education and I nearly dropped out so bad. Uh, I felt worthless, I felt useless. A lot, of, I heard many of you are secondary school teachers. Children struggle with it. If you cannot make that product, what will happen to you? Will you crumble? And what are we going to do about it? I managed to pick myself up, but I only did a PhD at a much later age in life when I felt worth doing a PhD. So the effect of failure is very long term. And to feel useless, to feel helpless, to feel deficient. We are also dealing with the more we focus on product, and it must be excellent, the more we also leave a large group of people out, which could eventually be very successful. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a fine line between success and failure. So, the disruption of the traditional classroom and the start of new thinking. The traditional classroom is like a bi-directional street. I'm the teacher, I tell you what is knowledge, what you need to know, and you spit out the answers the way I like to see it. Not too much of change. But we're dealing in a classroom where it's happening now. 
This is what's happening. It is disruptive because of the internet. There are many different way, roads that lead to Rome. There are many different ways of thinking of how to adapt it. There are many different cultures that have very different needs. And we have to think about our own culture. We are not speaking from the clones, the war of the clones, where everybody's the same. Can you remember that episode in Star Wars? And it scares you. Everybody is the same. We're not. So we have to come to see that knowing becomes a failure if we only spit out the right answer. We must have versatility in thought. And that's why the Maker Fair comes about trying, building resistance, developing social relationship because you want to share your ideas with others. We want to talk about interest. Not everybody is interested in making something like that. We work with communities. We found that girls are more interested in narratives and that boys are, were more interested in making games that could catch something. And that is interesting. We also see different ethnicities whereby the narratives play a more stronger role than that, the eventually building. We need to talk about disturbances that come in, sudden new influxes. How are we going to deal with it? How are we going to deal with it that jobs are being taken away by artificial intelligence? Would it be that only 5% of the population will have the technology in the hands and the other 95 will have nothing? These are realistic issues that we need to address as well in a make affair. And we need to search for new and continuous learning. So failure is for me not the opposite of success, but it is inherent in successful living in the 21st century. If you can cope and say, you know what, I didn't do it perfect, but it started a new way of thinking for me. It started a new way of inventing. When we build that in our students, because many of you are teachers, and we need to build confident learners, we are not building learners that come insecure from the school. If we do that, I don't think we are deserved to be educators. So we need to look for success as a complex concept that requires thought of what it means. Is success in grade everything? Or do we look holistically and say, a person who knows to make something out of life, who lives and thinks about what it means to be a fellow human being. Not to encourage anyone to fail. I will not say, hey, it's good of you to fail. No, but to say encouragement to lead to greater achievements. And then, can we see failure as the essence to succeed teaches, teaching children and adults to become resilient, innovative, and embrace the challenges of a volatile and unknown future? So I bring the onus to you. Oh, so not supposed to do that. Let's think about what is not. What is the future? What is the future of not knowing? What is the future of knowing? Can I ask you? What does that mean for you? The future of not knowing. What does that bring to you? thought. We always say we know, but do we know? If you look at here, what is happening? I mean, I painted the sky and the sea. I took a photo. It's about change. Yes, constant change, constant involvement. So knowledge is constantly evolving. It's not static. What about future not being linear? What does that mean? Only in age we move linear. I can give credit to that. Thank God I'm still moving linear and not horizontal yet. What does it mean that we are not moving linear? Exactly, because we need to branch out. We are not people who just move on in years, but we are people who are growing around us. The future is not unambiguous. 
What does that mean? It is ambiguous. Yes, it is. It is. And the future is not to be anticipated. Now these are critical questions to me that comes with making, with creating, with innovating, with failure. If we let our children think deeper about the subject we embrace, we also are embracing technology. So the future is not sure. The future is not predictable. The future is not either or. The future is to come. So to think about it and then to reflect on the pace and change of success. It was already mentioned about uh, Nokia, which was supposed to be seen now first as success, now as failure. I see it as a stepping stone to the future. If we see it as a stepping stone to the future, is it still a failure now? It becomes a milestone in history. So we give credit to what has happened, and then we move and say we make the future ours. Not to clone it, but to move and make it ours. And the record player, it is not a failure. I work today with Garage Band. A lot of things that were in the record player are part of it because you have to move and work at different speeds. Uh, typewriters, we may say we don't use them, but hey, we have keyboards. Yeah? We have cassettes, Walkman. You know, we say, oh, how do we do it? But we still have the earplugs. But it has changed, it has evolved. It is not outdated. It is a stepping stone to new ideas. And there we want to say, when you fail now, use it. Because it will come one day, and it will come and be part of what you're going to make. And that is part of that process of making. And to start very young with children. So this part, we have post-its. Very interesting history. It was supposed to be strong glue and then the paper stickies. Paper stickies are slowly out of date. But you know what? We are using it now on our apps, on the iPad, because we move the stickies around and we are actually. But it is not the stickies that is the thought about it. It's about people combining their thoughts and clustering it in colors. So we become visual thinkers. So we have to look what it is all about that we make, what we create, what we think about. So we need to nurture learning content very much if we want to embrace failure, if we want to embrace making, embrace innovating and creativity. So play in play -in creates opportunities and we work very much with STEAM and here you see children of communities that were not supposed to play like this. They were supposed to be naughty. They were supposed to be playing truancy. And what do I see? Because I've used the photos. What do we see in these children? Curiosity. Curiosity? What else? As a teacher, what's, what strikes you? engagement and that's what we need what else creativity. creativity because they are moving they're trying what else exploration. exploration what else there's so much going on in these children and what you see is also attention patience uh, resilience overcoming hurdles and this is what happened in our steam program where we started to reach out and we also start to see that these kids can create but they need somebody who believes and i think that is something we need in future education we need to believe to believe that all communities are makers so classroom teaching play and steam is prepare, preparation for 21st century learning it is about nurturing the critical 
thinking, the communication, the collaboration, because in the previous photo, you also saw collaboration coming in, uh, being in tune. Children do not learn to solve problems over a short period of time, remember that. We think that it is so fast. We sometimes think, oh, we can just take the magic potion. No, no, no. It is starting with our attitudes, with our beliefs, and it's very hard work. It is coming together as a community over the coming few days. So these initiatives are so powerful. We become and start thinking together, trying it out and say, hey, what does this idea mean to me? What does this mean to me? Children need to learn to adapt in social needs and situations that can replicate real life. And real life, as we all know, is not easy. Real life is not a dream. Real life is everyday hurdles, meeting time, meeting restraints, meeting financial problems, uh, working with all kinds of stuff. Children need opportunities to fail and to be picked up so as to become innovative, creative, and resilient. Children need facilitation, they need resources, they need opportunities in which they need to learn to communicate their ideas to others. And in play, we give a lot of training for teachers. We work in schools. We have moved into primary schools by building maker spaces, whereby children learn to play. And although children can play, the biggest hurdle we're facing now is teachers to I don't know why. But to let teachers see that children are natural learners who actually are very willing to adapt the future and how much we can learn from students if only we give them the opportunity. So what is needed is the emphasis on confidence that failing is temporary and that students need to learn to embrace the future. We have to renew and grow explore and build, maintain and strengthen, expand adjacent markers. And these are some of the four key areas we need to think of. We know so little, and let me tell you, I don't know the future, no. But I know core concepts. If we are open and we allow ourselves to renew each day, and when I'm standing here, I have had a lot of renewals. And the beauty is, I still feel young. Because of that, I'm still in tune with today. And I'm still ready for tomorrow. And that is what we have to give our children as well. You know, they have a long way to go. Maybe 50, 60, 70, 80 years more. What happens if we stop them from growing now? Maybe say, the world is there, we have made it. You just do and make what I did better. We're not preparing them. We need to explore the world, and we make them ready. Because if you say, these are the boundaries of Singapore, you stay here, they're not ready. We need to give them more. We need to expand adjacent markets. We need to maintain, and we need to strengthen. So not knowing does not mean no knowledge. I do not know what tomorrow brings. I don't even know what this afternoon brings. But it doesn't mean that I have no knowledge. Invention derives from working with the unknown. Invention comes when you suddenly discover something. Trying to make better means working on the future. Not trying means a failure to adapt to the future. So these are the things, and there's some very wise people from around the world who said a lot of wise things. Falling down is not failure. Failure comes when you don't get up where you have fallen. Our greatest glory is not in ever fall, fail, falling, but it is in rising every time we fall. And a failure is not always a mistake. It may simply be the best one can do under circumstances. We have to put failure in the perspective of learning and in meaningful learning, in disruptive learning, in disruptive thinking, in thinking about a new world.
He has been my master. A great teacher. Failure is. Thank you.